day one, it's August 15th. Uh, my name is Mo Agostino, Chief Commodity Strategist with Farms.com Risk Management. We're here with Dennis Rivest. We're in uh, Lakeshore. Uh, and Dennis, thanks for spending some time here with us. Um, um, My we're, pleasure. We're continuing with the farmer interview series here. And Dennis, tell me a little bit about this field. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you were hit with hail. Yeah, we ended what up happened? planting a great start. They came out of the ground and then got devastated a couple hours later with uh, hail and two inches of rain. And so we got back into the field uh, seven to ten days later closer to June uh, and uh, had to replant the whole thing and they came out of the ground surprisingly well. Wow. Well, they look really great for a replanted uh, soybean plant. So what are you doing here? Uh, obviously, you, uh, you're you trying to save the crop. What, what type of recipe are you using? Uh, basically, it starts years back. I mean, we don't sell our straw. We uh, leave all the straw on the field. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're dealing with clay-based ground, which doesn't drain well. Uh, drainage is our number one priority whenever we buy a farm. Sure. Uh, then fertility coming second. Uh, keeping our fertility up is probably our number one. And uh, compaction. We don't want to be out here when it's wet. We kind of take our time spring, fall. We try not to push it. Um, next, you know, once you get the crop out of the ground, uh, in our area, the, the whole area is lacking in manganese. They say it's 80% of the ground, but we're not gonna find out which 80%. So we do 100% of our acres with manganese um, every year. Kind of split it up sometimes with the first uh, glyphosate or right. Roundup. Right. Um, then uh, a couple weeks later, um, you know, if we have to go in with just manganese, uh, you know, so be it. Uh, and there's some other micronutrients that we're putting in some years. Uh, We've played around with boron and a few other ones. Some can get a little hot, depending. Uh, then a couple weeks later, uh, you know, fungicide has been a big plan, especially in our seed bean production with uh, KP Plus or any kind of similar product. Uh, trying to keep the flowers going as long as possible, especially since it seems like we're always getting into a drought right when we need it. Uh, so we're just trying to keep the plants alive as long as possible. Um, you know, and keeping them healthy to deal with any sure. fungicide might not be so much mandatory, but uh, you know, it helps with the stress, even right. in corn or beans, it seems to work now, out for us. Now, you said that, uh, that you're prone to being drier than most. Yes. It seems like you miss the rains both north Between or... Between the two lakes. So, I mean, right. it seems to be in one side or the other. Right. So, we really can't depend on having soil moisture all the time, even though we're on clay. You know, it seems to be one extreme or the other, either too wet or too dry. We right. call it two-day clay, basically. Right. So, so this this recipe you have, the lack of moisture, what are, what are you averaging here, typically? Um, last few years we've done well. We've been high 60s. Well, that's why. That's we've good, that's had good. some hundreds. Yeah. But not on an average, obviously. Right, right. I'm not saying a blip for a hundred. We've had fields. The one across the road, we had some do 115 last year. But I mean, on average. With the program, I'm usually seeing um, beans for sure, 10 bushels. If you use county average, uh, maybe 10 plus. But manganese being a bigger part, even though it's cheap, I mean, it's, you know, like one or two bushels. Everything's a bushel, but I mean, yep. like I said, we just try to take out the, I think in the end, it re reduces our variability in the field. We like our fields to be more even. Uh, therefore, you know, we don't get those fluctuations. Right. And we find that when the price of land went up, we said, you know what, let's just work with what we have, maximum yield on on the acres we have versus going out and buying more acres. We just found let's push it to the maximum. And uh, I mean, I might have used some of the greenhouse kind of things that guys are doing there and try to sure. apply it in, in our, you know, larger scale. But right. uh, that's what it came down well, to. Well, if you listen to a lot of those experts and, and some of those producers that are, are getting those 100 bushel per acre yields, uh, they would all agree that fertility is one of those keys to producing And timing, timing, yields. timing, timing. Right. The spray, like I said, you can't just go out and spray. You can spray all you want, but it comes down to crunch time. We, we bought a sprayer specifically. I mean, we gotta do a lot of acres in a very short window. If the beans were planted all together, right. you need that sprayed usually within five days we have to cover all our acres right. thank you for your time not a problem thanks